Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast. I'm Ryan Chacon, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about the benefits that Matter will bring to the market. And joining me today is Andy Watson, the Director of Product Management and the IoT Lead at RightPoint. They are a company that is focused on delivering engaging customer experiences across products and operations. Fantastic episode. I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. Prior to getting into this episode, really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. If you're on YouTube, hit that thumbs up and hit that bell icon so you get the latest episodes as soon as they are out. Other than that, let's get on to the episode. Welcome, Andy, to the IT for All podcast. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Excited to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, let's kick this off by having you give a quick introduction about yourself and the company for our audience. Yeah, of course. My name is Andy Watson, and I'm a director in our digital product practice leading up our IoT group here at RightPoint. I've got over a decade's worth of experience in end-to-end -end solution delivery across multiple technologies and industries, including smart home, retail, travel, robotics, home improvement, manufacturing, healthcare, sustainability, banking, and not-for-profits. At RightPoint, we help our clients drive digital transformation by delivering engaging customer experiences across products and operations. RightPoint is a global product and experience leader. Our team of experts help clients bring the right solutions to the right problems. Um, some of our standout IoT innovations include creating a connected in-car experience for Cadillac's Lyric electric vehicle, developing a user-friendly controller for Boston Dynamics Spot Robot, um, and designing a touchless water dispenser from Natural Choice that delivered increased hygiene during the COVID-19 pandemic. In short, with a human-centric approach, we help bring digital products to life here at RightPoint. Fantastic. So I know we have a lot of things we wanted to cover kind of in our, in our conversation today. The first one um, is really around the, the benefits of matter and what those benefits are that are being brought to the market. Uh, and I'd love it if you could kind of kick us off by just talking through that a little bit. Yeah, totally. Uh, so, you know, the TLDR, Matter. Matter simplifies the smarts. Smarts in your smart home. Um, most of us are probably familiar with Matter's four principles that it's built on. Um, we've got simplicity. Let's make it easy to purchase and use our products. Um, interoperability. Let's make our devices uh, from different brands work with each other. Uh, reliability. Um, you know, it's got to be consistent. We have local connectivity. So if we lose internet, we're still able to actually use our products. And then our fourth is security. You know, let's make this uh, streamlined for, for developers and users to use. But um, what we try to do is really break this down and what it means for the human, the user, the, the stakeholders involved in the smart home experience. Um, you know, so from a consumer standpoint, Matter's a game changer. Um, Matter gives assurances that yeah. You know, anything that's matter compliant uh, will simply work with one another. Um, the setup process is going to be standardized. Um, users will know what to expect when they purchase a matter compliant product and how to quickly get that spooled up and running within their house. Um, it's just not something we've had today from a consumer's perspective. I can't tell you how frustrating it is mm. um, when it takes longer than 60 seconds to set up a light bulb, a smart light bulb in your home. Um, you know, right. a lot of the th things we, we do with our line of work is, you know, when you think about creating a digital experience, um, for a smart home device, for instance, um, you're, you're really competing with, you know, some of the traditional ways of working with that device, a light switch, for instance, flicking on a light switch on and off. We've done it for, mm -hmm. you know, over a hundred years. It's simple. It's easy. It's something to do. Uh, we need to, we need to make sure that the digital right. experience, the digital equivalent of that is is equally easy to use. Um, and it just it just hasn't been the case prior to, to Matter. Um, I could go on and on about the, the benefits there, um, but I, I almost akin it to uh, the early days of the railroad in, in the US. Okay. So a lot of people don't know this, but um, in the early days of, of the railroad here in the US, um, all the major railroad companies had use different gauges um, and they had uh, specific trains that could only work on that gauge track. So for instance, uh, a train in New York um, couldn't use the same tracks as a train in you know, the Midwest or South. Um, so right. trains couldn't actually okay. traverse these different areas, right? Um, and, you know, in order to kind of break fix this, uh, this situation, uh, they came up with things that they would have like a third rail they'd add onto the train tracks to enable some trains to go onto that third rail that couldn't go on those other two rails. Mm. 
Um, they invented special cranes that would literally pick up these trains and, and move them onto a separate set of tracks that they built next to the old set of tracks that were in a different gauge. Um, it was really mm -hmm. a complete nightmare when it came to interoperability, right? And that is where we've been with the smart home before matter. Um, until we've kind of standardized our railroad tracks or gauges of railroad tracks where a train can traverse the entire country on the same set of tracks. Um, we, we, we're seeing that now with matter, that same analogy, right? Where we've got yeah. um, standardized protocols, standardized experience. Um, so that whole necessary of having to be a technical genius, um, you know, or a computer engineer mm -hmm. to kind of get your products to work with one another, to set them up in your home is no longer required. Right. No, I, I, I agree. Um, I, 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 so, you know, when we're talking about standardization, obviously there's tons of benefits that are associated with that. Um, what does that really mean for when I think about the IoT sector as a whole in, in the ability for these companies to still differentiate their brands and product lines, given the fact that this is something that is, you know, focused around being a standard, something that makes interoperability much easier, you know, things like that. Like where, where's that opportunity still for differentiating brands and product lines um, and not kind of all falling into the same bucket? Yeah, totally. Um, you know, there's a couple of things, right? So as matter widely gets adopted and, and it's, to be honest, I don't think it's going to be, um, it's going to be something that's going to be widely adopted in the next couple of months. I think it's going to take a couple of years based off the conversations we'd had with many folks at CES this past, this past year and kind of the trajectory of, of okay. companies offering backwards compatibility of, of some of their products and what their you know roadmap mm. looks like for, um, for new, new products getting a uh, matter matter compatibility. I, I think it's going to be a little bit of time. Um, but over the coming years, as, as matter does get widely okay. adopted, uh, you know, I do think it'll bring some uncertainty about what it means for, for companies trying to maintain that digital relationship with their customers. Um, you know, I think right. we're going to see, we're, we're going to see um, a transformation within the industry once matter is fully adopted of users taking, you know, taking a couple different paths. No longer are we going to be required to have 16 different apps for 16 different types of devices or 16 different brands of the same device. Right, 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 right. Um, right. You know, I think that you're, you're starting to see that consolidation already with some of the big ecosystem players, right? With Google Home, Apple HomeKit, your Samsung SmartThings, mm -hmm. um, and your Amazon Alexa, obviously. But... Um, you know, there's still a lot of nuances that exist in the, in the market before matter around, you know, whether this only works on HomeKit or whether this only works on um, Amazon Alexa or works with Google versus, you know, is yep. uh, Google Home compatible. And a lot of that goes away with uh, matter's multi-admin feature, which is phenomenal for both developers and consumers mm. to be able to kind of use those different ecosystems. In order to get that to right. work on those different ecosystems, though, um, you know, there had to be some concessions made about what sort of, you know, I'll call it like basic functionality, different device types, um, you know, we can offer in a, in a, in a matter ecosystem. So for instance, um, I think about like smart lighting, right? Um, smart lighting, you know, from a matter perspective, it's going to support, it, it supports, I should say it supports today, scheduling, light brightness and color control. Um, but not necessarily things like light mm. shows or sophisticated triggers, right? Um, so we've kind of had to okay. distill down some of the functionality of our smart devices in order to have a common base that our different branded same types of devices can work with one another, right? I mean, not all devices would support mm -hmm. things like smart or things like um, light shows, for instance. So anyways, getting to this, this point where right. we've kind of distilled down basic functionality um, is great. It simplifies the experience from a user's perspective. It will be good for a lot of use cases of a lot of users, right? Um, but to your earlier point, um, this does open up uh, an opportunity to differentiate that experience. Um, device differentiation yeah. is is going to be really tough in a physical sense. Um, it's really going to come down to differenti okay. differentiation through a digital experience. Um, we feel pretty strongly about that. Um, yeah. 
you're already kind of seeing that right now within kind of the commoditization of smart home functionality from a physical device perspective. Um, so it's only natural to take that digital course, but it's mm -hmm. going to be even more forced down that pathway yeah. with matter. So, so what challenges does that then kind of bring up for those branded digital experiences that you kind of talked about now? Yeah, I mean, right. So, you know, more and more users are going to opt out of downloading, you know, your, your branded apps. Um, and, and with that, um, you know, more and more user data and that digital relationship that you have with your users is going to go away mm -hmm. um, to some degree for a lot of these companies. Mm. Um, you know, as they get kind of immersed into their favorite ecosystem, um, they may not find a need to engage with the branded app experience any longer. So, you know, some of the challenges okay. that we're seeing within the marketplace is finding those ways to differentiate your experience and really entice users back into your own experience by providing value add features and functionality. Um, I, I kind of I make another analogy here of um, what we're seeing and you know, what we've seen in the airline industry, right? So um, matters, like, matters like flying economy. Uh, you pretty much know what you're going to expect uh, when you fly economy, you know, whether that's from, you know, flying economy at Delta or American Airlines or any of the other players, uh, you'll have basic accommodations, you got baggage restrictions, but you'll get to where you're going. Um, you know, airlines, right. are, airlines offer the ability to upgrade your experience through add-ons, you know, making your seating more comfortable, higher quality food and so on and so forth. Um, they also differentiate kinds of experiences you can have on that same flight by offering things like, you know, business class or first class options. Um, right. And then, you know, finally, they, they differentiate themselves through stronger loyalty programming rewards. Um, you know, and, and that, that analogy is, is exactly where I see the, the smart home industry going. Um, with matter, you know, matter will okay. bring that standardization, that basic experience that's going to be okay for most users. Um, but companies are going to have to look at ways to offer, you know, that upgraded experience um, for users that are seeking out uh, a more um, immersive and, and more robust set of features and functionality. So tell me a little bit more about kind of the, those opportunities that that seem to exist for those brands that are thinking beyond the matter standard? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think right now um, a, a lot of the industry is really working towards, um, you know, accomplishing the mattered uh, compliance, um, you know, whether that's forwards and backwards compatibility with uh, products they have on their, their, their roadmap okay. or products that they've launched previously. I think there's a really great opportunity for folks to be looking around the corner about what it's going to take to differentiate yourself in a post-matter world. Um, I think a lot of that groundwork mm. can be done today um, as companies are rolling out this matter compliance um, throughout 2023 into 2024. I think we need to be thinking about those differentiation um, tactics now. Um, and, you know, we've got a couple of okay. questions that we typically ask, right? Um, you know, at a very, very high level, you know, figuring out what are those enticement factors that are going to keep your users engaged with your branded experience. Now, I think there is, um, you know, there, there's a fine line to walk here, right? And I think that that fine line to walk here is, let's not fool ourselves, right? I don't think anybody enjoyed having to open up 16 different apps um, for, you know, every single type of branded uh, smart home <laughs> technology right. that they had in their home, sure. right? Um, that 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 simply wasn't working, and. You know, with Matter kind of, um, you know, some of the, the forcing function of having users to do that um, is gone, right? Um, you know, I think sure, uh, the sure. vast majority of users are, are, are going to be playing in kind of their favorite ecosystem space. Now, that's not to say that there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for, for newcomers, um, for, for brands to become that favorited ecosystem. I think that's a huge play there. Um, but mm. finding those 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 key moments, um, those keys, those, those those critical pieces of functionality that would differentiate yourself and help bring them into your branded experience is going to be paramount. Um, and I know we've kind of already covered this, right? Yeah. But like that's the very first question to ask is, you know, what are the gaps in your current experience that you might have today that you need to fill in order to help differentiate yourself? 
um, you know, what is your competition within your same space doing, offering from an experience perspective? Are there lessons learned from, you know, uh, from areas that you may have gaps in that your competition is doing better in that you can learn from and help uh, with future iterations? Um, and then finally, you know, taking a look at what this, what the experience is looking like or is going to look like with your products in a matter world and what gaps exist from, you know, the things that you know your users want to do and you know that your users want to be able mm -hmm. to, to, to exploit, but you, you can't with the basic functionalities of matter, right? So identifying kind of what are those, um, those extra value add, those ancillary features and functionalities and capabilities um, will help you prioritize the mm -hmm. impact that it'll have um, and help you assess the complexities of implementing those features and capabilities within your own digital experience yeah. to help you entice users back into your branded experience. Yeah, I think this this all kind of ties into the ability to, to really differentiate your products and and kind of, like you said, grow grow your, your users and, and your customers. So that's uh, that's kind of great advice for sure. Yeah, and you know another area that we see um, you know some opportunity around is is strategic partnerships. Um, you know, okay. in um, with Matter, uh, we go back to kind of that basic functionality out of box that you can get within kind of any ecosystem, right? Um, but with the early stages or early days of Matter, which we're currently in, there's going to be many smart home devices that aren't supported. Um, within the first versions, take robot vacuums or um, security cameras, for instance. Um, those are some of the most okay. prevalent smart home products in our houses today, but they're currently not supported by right. the the production versions of Matter. You know, so as a as a creator of smart home products, you can ask yourself: Are there strategic partners partnerships that I can make across that aisle with devices that you know aren't currently within the Matter supported framework? Um, and they're not within kind of our brand portfolio, but a partnership I can make um, to assist in that interoperability that it, that doesn't exist today with Matter um, to increase capabilities that provide the value added features and functionalities um, that you, your brand mm -hmm. might not be able to, to, to provide, but can provide through collaboration with strategic partners. Um, you know, take for instance, um, you know, a widget maker, a smart home lighting company, um, working with uh, offering a product that works with Matter and six robot vacuum makers, right? So, kind of finding ways that you yeah. can differentiate yourself through those strategic partnerships, through the you know increase in interoperability that you can layer on to Matter, um, as well as you know the the co-marketing opportunities that you can get from doing such a collaboration. Um, would would be would be hugely beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. Now this has all been great advice, kind of great conversation around how to think about it. Because a lot of the conversations I've had recently have been, you know, the the excitement around matter, and obviously there are benefits to what matter is bringing to the market. But there's other ways to be thinking about it and what it can do, what it can't do, how um, brands and 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 uh, companies building those digital experiences should really be thinking about what the true opportunities that are going to exist with matter uh, as a standard in the market, for sure. Um, last thing I want to ask you before I let you go here is, um, so I guess looking forward into the rest of 2023 and to, to next year and stuff, what should, what, what do you think, that, where do you think the biggest opportunities lie uh, for, for a lot of these companies that we're talking about today? I think there's going to be a huge first mover advantage for those that look in a post matter world. Uh, okay. You know, what is, what are those differentiation factors and, and acting upon those now? Um, I think, uh, you know, a large part of the space is working towards that matter compliance and, you know, kind of figuring out what makes the most sense for their, their business and their brand in terms of backwards compatibility. Um, but I think the, the ones that are forward focused and forward looking are definitely going to excel. Um, they're going to excel uh, in a post matter world. So I think that's, uh, that, that, that's, that, that's what I would say to that. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, Ryan, I'm, I'm bullish on matter. I think matter is a long awaited standard. I think we've all been, you know, bated breath here of, of actually getting it uh, in our hands and, you know, uh, interoperability is, uh, is, is kind of the last frontier for a lot of people getting into the smart home 
uh, category yeah. in itself. So yeah. we're going to see a huge, you know, I, I'm, I'm bullish. I think we're going to see a lot of new entrants into the smart home category that we haven't had before. It's going to open up a tremendous amount of opportunity and innovation um, mm -hmm. for those that are thinking past matter, post matter. Yeah. Um, you know, what, again, what are those, those increases capabilities and those value add services that I can offer to my consumers to, to get them back into that branded right. experience. Right. Right. Um, I don't think, like I said, I don't think that this is, we're, we're going to see a world again where we have to, you know, remember the, the name of that obscure robot vacuum that you might've bought um, on sale at an Amazon discount or, or whatnot um, to figure out how to configure it anymore. If, if yeah. you don't want to, um, but I, I do see a world where Matter is going to enable users to pick and choose which digital experiences, digitally branded experiences, are worth having. Um, and you know, it's it's up us to okay. us, up to us as product leaders to figure out you know what what it's going to take to make worth having um, from a digital experience right. perspective. Right. Absolutely. Totally agree with you. I'm very excited about what's happening in the space for sure. Uh, for audience out there who wants to maybe follow up this conversation, learn more about what you have going on uh, over at the company, or just, just kind of kind of stay in touch in any capacity, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can visit our website, rightpoint.com slash IoT, um, to get a sense of our capabilities. Uh, and we also have links to uh, several different point of views that we have uh, and some white papers around matter specifically. Fantastic. Well, Andy, thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. I think our audience is getting a ton of value out of this. So thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Ryan.